thinking again about these different versions of Christianity and just how completely mutually contradictory they are. You cannot reconcile a God who loves everyone so much that the thought, that your thought that he might send someone to hell would grieve him because it's almost like a blasphemy against him for accusing him of being so vile. You can't reconcile that with someone who's absolutely convinced that this God will send you to hell for all eternity for not believing it. I mean, that you can't do that. So how could such different versions exist? Again, if there really is a God out there who communicates with us if we let him. How could that be? So then I did what I always do when I'm stuck, and I write myself a list. And I wrote myself a list of, okay, what, what do I believe? And I wrote a list of, this is what I believe about God. What don't I believe about God? And I wrote my list about what I didn't believe about God. This next bit was the clincher. I looked at my two lists, that I believed, that I didn't believe. God was like that. He wasn't like that. How did I know? That was my question to myself. How do I know? Here I am. I'm absolutely convinced that God is in column A. But he is absolutely convinced that God is in column B. How can I be sure that column A is right and that column B is wrong? And vice versa? And thinking about this, I had to come to the conclusion I simply didn't have anything to support column A, that column B didn't have to support it, and yet the two couldn't both be right. You could arrive at column A and column B, depending on which bits of the Bible you read, and which church you went to, and what kind of teaching you followed. And I realised that just simply having an inner hunch really wasn't good enough to base such important things on. You needed something outside yourself, something empirical to, to actually suggest that you've got this right. You need, because at the end of the day, lovely as it was to have this faith and certainty and all the rest of it, if it wasn't true, I didn't want it. I, I valued it because I believed it to be true. And if it wasn't true, then it had no value in it for me. And the more I thought about this, the more I realised that the kind of God a person believes in and thinks they've had personal experience of tells you an awful lot about that person and nothing whatsoever about God. And at that point, for me, it had to go. It had to go. And from that point, for a while I thought, well, perhaps there's something out there. Perhaps there's something benign out there. Um, I couldn't call myself a Christian anymore because having looked at all this, I just realised that Christianity didn't add up. I couldn't, I couldn't say I believed it because I didn't. But perhaps there was something out there. Maybe that was it. But that phase didn't last long because I quickly went through the same routine with that. Kind of, how do I know? You don't. Know, you're making it up again. You're just making it up. Nice thing to make up. Might be a nice thing to believe. You have no reason to believe it's true. It's got to go. And I suppose, I mean, I didn't instantly become an atheist. I think I would have said I was agnostic. For a while, I just shelved it. Don't know, not going to waste any more time on this. There might be something, might not, don't think there is, but that's it. And it wasn't until a little bit like later I, I started doing a course with the Open University, and at the time they had discussion forums, online discussion forums. And I got quite drawn into discussions. How am I doing for time? Is he? To how much? Hello? Oh, I'll stop soon. <laughs> I have very nearly finished. Can you can you cope with another five minutes? Okay. Thank you. Um, so I started taking part in these discussions, and I was interested that there was one forum called Christian Beliefs, and another called Atheist Agnostic. I have a friend here tonight from that old Open University forum. There, sitting there. I won't ask you to take a bow, but there you go. 
Um, and at the time I was genuinely interested to get in discussion with both because I hadn't decided which, which way really. And it so quickly became obvious to me that when I have asked questions or posed challenges on the Christian Beliefs Forum, Graham will confirm what it was like, you never got an answer. You got, or you got, you've offended me. <laughs> How dare you ask that? You're just a troll, all that sort of thing. Um, you just never got a satisfactory discussion. You just couldn't, you couldn't do it. It was like, it was like trying to pin jelly to the wall and it was just so frustrating. And then I'd go into the atheist group, atheist agnostic group, and sort of pose the same questions there. And you'd get a psychologist coming out and saying, oh, there's some interesting research on that, and point you to this study, and da 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 and, and you know, this is a really interesting thing to know, and you could read that, and oh, when you've read that, there's another long list for you. And then you'd get a scientist coming out and saying, oh, yeah, but the thing about evolution, da, 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 and, and you'd learn a lot about that, and then you'd get a historian, and would come, put it all in its historical context, and all of a sudden, instead of just being asked to accept, it's a mystery, you had answers. And even if they weren't definitive answers, they were things you could actually get a grip on. You could actually investigate, you could go off and read. And they made sense, or not. But, but if they didn't make sense, you were allowed to say so. Without someone saying, oh, you're not allowed to say that because you've offended me. And I quite quickly at that stage just felt so drawn to this different approach of doing things. It just suited me so much better to actually have something to wrestle with that meant something and I was learning so much as well. And this was one of the things that had struck me, but it didn't strike me until then. Um, but looking back, I realised that although I'd been part of quite a liberal tradition in the church, nevertheless, there was a tendency of, of being religious to shut down questions. And I'm not actually suggesting that it was necessarily deliberate. It's just the effect that when you give your mind over to mystery, and that actually the highest thing in the universe is mystery, well then asking questions becomes a bit redundant, because whatever answer you arrive at is only ever going to be the intermediate, and that obviously what's higher than that is always going to be mystery. And, I mean, I'd never, I'd never worried about evolution or anything, I'd never had a problem with that, I was happy to accept it, even though I didn't really understand it, um, because I just assumed, well, God made everything, so he just put that in play, that, that was fine, God did it. And at that point, you've got the answer. God did it. There's no need then to go off and start finding out exactly how it worked and all that sort of thing. Take the God did it away, and all of a sudden, you've got a whole world to explore and find out about. And it was so exciting. And I really quickly stopped being an, an agnostic on the basis that it didn't take long to realise there wasn't even a fence to sit on. It just wasn't even worth maintaining, retaining as an idea or a possibility. I don't, I don't believe it. I know I don't believe it. And at that point, I happily became an atheist and have been happily an atheist ever since. And I have to say, it's just... Just finally, Christians often talk about the joy of becoming a Christian and the sense of you know, being released from all your sins and all that sort of stuff. And I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, okay, that's true. But I tell you what, it was nothing, nothing to compare with a sense of just joy and liberation and world here I come that came from letting go of it again. Thank you very much indeed.